Now I think we're ready to begin the prologue. And friends, we'll get our foot in the door, but this is without doubt one of the most profound sections that you'll find. And none of us will be able adequately to understand it. We can only stand on the fringe of these great truths. And under this section, we're going to call attention to some things that necessarily had to be omitted in the rather full outline that I've just gone over. But they characterize this gospel and they add to a better understanding of the contents. Now, in chapter 1, Jesus is called the Word, the Logos. And that isn't explained by Greek philosophy, but by the Hebrew tetragram Jehovah, that He is Jehovah. Now, we have this statement here. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Four great earth-shaking statements are made. Now, the first one is, "...in the beginning was the Word." And the Word is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the beginning here, there are actually three beginnings that are mentioned in Scripture. The beginning in Genesis goes back to the creation of the physical universe. And you can't date that. It's been characteristic to laugh at Usher's dating that the creation of the world took place about five or 6,000 years ago. Well, you can poo-poo that, all right. That's not true. But you can poo-poo the latest things that the scientists are saying, that it's two billion years old. Now, because you find a bone down in Africa and you try to date it and you say that it goes back two billion years, may I say to you, you don't know that at all. That doesn't mean the universe has been here that long. doesn't prove it at all. What it does prove is that it's probably been here at least two billion years, but I think they're pikers. I think they're just as wrong as Usher was to say five or six thousand years and to say two or three billion years. Why, this earth has been here maybe two or three trillion years. And friends, it could have been here two or three squillion years. It's been here a long time. After all, we have a God of eternity. What do you think he's been doing in the past? Waiting for you and me to arrive here? May I say to you, he hasn't been waiting around for us. I'm of the opinion that a great drama's gone on in eternity past that you and I know nothing about at all. And so this universe has been here a long, long time. In the beginning was the Word. But the interesting thing is here, The beginning that's mentioned here, when it's mentioned, it's already past tense. Continued action is the imperfect. It's used here. In the beginning was the Word. So you go back like they're going today, two billion years, three billion years, put on your stakes. All right, when you do, the Lord Jesus comes out of eternity to meet you, and he's already past tense. In the beginning was the Word. So here's a beginning that's no beginning at all. It's the beginning that you and I can go to, and we can't even go to it. We can't even conceive of it. But wherever you want to put down your pegs, the Lord Jesus is already past tense. He's the Ancient of Days, and His hair is as white as snow, even back yonder billions of years ago, my beloved. In the beginning was the Word. Now, to determine the exact meaning, I don't think it's easy. Obviously, the Lord Jesus Christ is not the logist of Greek philosophy. Rather, He's the memra of the Hebrew Scriptures, the Word of God. And notice how important a word is in the Old Testament. For instance, the name for Jehovah was never pronounced. It was such a holy word that they never used it at all. But this is the one who is the Word and gathering up everything that was said of him in the Old Testament. He is now presented as the one in the beginning. 
Now, as we said before, this beginning annotates the very first words in the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Back to billions of years back of creation, maybe you can go beyond that, but let's put on a point there. Billions of years back of creation, he already was. He comes out of eternity to meet us. He did not begin. In the beginning was the Word. He was already there when the beginning was. Well, somebody says there has to be a beginning somewhere. All right. Wherever you begin, he's there to meet you. He's already past tense. In the beginning was the Word. Five words in the original language. And there's not a man on top side of this earth who can put a date on it or understand it or fathom it. This first tremendous statement starts us off in space, you see. Now, the second statement is this, "...and the Word was with God." This makes it abundantly clear that He's separate and distinct from God the Father. You cannot identify Him as God the Father because He's with God. But someone says if He's with God, He's not God. Well, the third statement sets us straight. The Word was God. This is a clear, emphatic declaration that the Lord Jesus Christ is God. In fact, the Greek is more specific than this because in the Greek language, the important word is placed at the beginning of the sentence and it reads, God was the Word. And friends, that's emphatic. You cannot get it more emphatic than that. Do you want to get rid of the deity of Christ? My friend, you cannot get rid of it. The first three statements in John's gospel tie the thing down. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was.